push forward with that job. Mike's doing a good job, but, you know, with Isaiah, where he's at, like everybody's in different return to play modes. And some guys you see out here, we, we assess it every day. Certain guys that they may think it's best that they stay inside. There's got certain guys that we think, hey, they can probably go about half practice, and we're, we're very intentional about, you know, certain routes we don't put them on if, if they're dealing with something, a minor or something. So it's on an individual basis right there. But that's with everybody. You know, we, we take the health of the team very important. And just a little update, um, like with Jalen Mayfield, he's going, he's dealing with a low back issue. And so we got to get it to calm down. Um, he's a tough, tough kid. He's been grinding out. And so we'll see where that goes. Um, but he's been out here. He's itching out here. We're, we're trying to calm it down, and we'll see what it looks like uh, hopefully next week. But that's what I know that was probably coming, right? Yeah. Asking about maybe, coming, yeah. Coming. So I'm just going to be transparent with you guys because it's unfair sometimes. Guys are in there, and they're trying to, he's, he's trying to win a job, and you know something's bothering him. So we'll see how it goes. As everybody knows, back's going to be tricky. Has that, has that lower back issue been a thing since the start of camp for him, or did that? Again, I, you know, give the guys some privacy, but – Put it this way, the, the guy's a tough – he's a really tough guy and um, something we think – don't see it being major. But, again, as you guys know, you're dealing with backs, heads, hearts. You know, those things can be tricky. You're talking about workload and how you monitor that. Do you use Catapult or some other GPS tracking system or do you just do it based on time on the field? I know some here you use, you know, know I think exactly every, how I think many steps. Do, gosh, I don't think it's special anymore. Um, Whoever in, invented it, they probably made a pretty good living. I don't know an NFL team or a major college football team that's not using it. I, I guess probably all 32 are using it, and I would bet you almost every Power Five is using it unless they had to, you know, throw it to the NIL. I don't know. <laughs> so, so to answer your question, all seriousness, yes, we we do. We, it, it's part of the data, and again, it, it, as a year go by, you finally have comparative data. You know, it's like how do you compare? Uh, Drake London's workload to what Jerry Rice used to do. You know, it's all – so that's what you want is, is data to build up, and, you know, you got to be smart with it. And, again, you can have the best analytics and uh, tracking systems, but if you don't have the right users for it, it doesn't matter. You're just lighting money on fire. A lot of teams will scrimmage that second Saturday. Yeah. Right. Are you going to do that tomorrow? Or we'll, we'll put them in there. And so, like today, um, I think this is a good week to find out about us because you're going to find out. It's always easy to come out with energy the first few days. And as the grind of camp goes, and what, what you're looking to see, and why I, I stood back there, and that was the team periods, and we're going to put, put these guys the most pressure possible. You want to see. You're, you're going you're gonna to have bad drives. You're going to see who can go in there and who's going to lead, going to step up and can rescue. Whether, whether you know, starts out pretty good back and forth, put the offense in some very adverse situations, see how they respond, credit the defense. They play here or there, but I want you know I want to see because you're going to find out a lot about guys and those young guys. Again, when you're in these manicured, scripted periods, they can flash on you, and then you're training to play a game. So when you get into these call-up periods on the sideline, there's nobody out there to rescue them. So there, there's some guys that the young guys that you know they need to pick some things up before we get out to Detroit. How would you describe the issue running back? Yeah, it's a very you know. The beauty of there's a lot of good competition everywhere. I thought we had some better runs today. Again, we weren't tackling. Uh, those guys are competing. They all want, the, want, want a job, and it'll. We got a long way to go till uh, end of August. Would you uh, talk about the grind, the training camp, and everything? Is there any guy that may have kind of, kind of seen, kind of creep up a, a little bit as far as in the secondary, like a guy like the offer, or a guy like the. Yeah, I, I like the, the competition back there. Uh, there's guys, those guys are playing a lot of confidence. You like to see it. You like to see it carry over. You know, the one thing too, it's a tough position to play, especially on the island outside a corner. And this, yeah, you may get, get by them in practice, but that's why those games are important because there's real consequences. You know, you you guess, you jump something, you're wrong. Everybody in the, in the stadium and on TV is going to see it going the other way. So you got to have a special mindset back there. I like where it's trending. But again, I'll, I'll withhold judgment, let this thing play out. Arthur, I know everything's a work in progress, but what gives you confidence that you can put together some sort of effective pass rush this year? Well, a lot of things, Jeff. Um, 
But again, I know some people are enamored with stats. Some of them are comical. The stats are good, but some of them are comical. You're talking about a 32-team league. Um, you know, you're, you're doing everything you can to win the games, and we're going to have to deal with what, what we have available. But I, I see some promise in some of these young guys we brought in here. You'd hope you're two in the system. You'd hope you become a better pressure team if that's, you know, if you can't get there traditionally with four. Um, but I want to see how these, some of these young guys, they've shown flashes. So that gives me, again, until we go out to do it, Jeff, it's just me, you know, spitting out words to you. But that would give me some, some hope that we can get some guys winning one-on-one. In the, the day, we'll evolve to win the game. I don't give a – I mean, st again, it, it's almost comical sometimes. And there's a lot of selfish players and coaches that always worry about – we worry about winning. I never called a play in, in my mind to go win the game. I've been around guys that call it. You're down big, and they're they going to pad the stats, and then they can get on that, that carousel with a new team, and they talk to you guys behind it, so you pump them. We're about winning here, and we're going to find solutions. But I, but at the start, I think we got the guys with the right mindset. You know D pretty well, obviously, in his defenses. Do you think the fact that he knows the guys who are coming back now, he'll have a little better idea about how to work guys in creative ways to try to create something? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I, I see it, it's – been refreshing to watch the front seven plays. Those guys are playing aggressive. They actually, guys got coming downhill. Um, it's physical. There's a lot of good competition, especially uh, inside and, and, and the inside linebacker. So I've been pleased with the front seven. Um, again, when you, a lot of times you may think you have a perfect call, but if you don't execute it or you don't have the right intent, hell, you, you may be able to get out of the backfield and scramble. You think you can scramble? Without pulling a hammy. Um, in that same vein, I think you were talking about Ade the other day. I think you made the comment that he's quietly getting better. Yes. What does that mean for him in the second year? Well, Ade, he's not a flashy guy. Um, just a really, really solid person. I love his mindset. You try not to be partial with some guys, but the guys that go out there and grind it, and you know when they're working through something, and he, he's tough, he's smart. Um, played a lot of good snaps for us last year, but they start figuring it out, and he understands what the strengths of his game are. You know, setting an edge, developing a, a consistent rush move, or if we go in there as another guy, as, you know, you can use a guy like Ade in the pressure packages, and he figures out how to how to set some of these games up. He can be a very effective player. Guys, know where they stand. I don't, I don't play games. You can, you, I, like everybody, I got a lot of flaws. But I'm not going to be a hypocrite, and I'm not going to play games with these guys. I'm direct. I develop a relationship, but I'm very honest with them. Does that mean, uh, Coach, you're telling a guy you're going to have a hard time making the, uh, the team. Yeah. You tell a guy right now you're a back. Right now I don't have you at number one. Maybe you think you're there, but you're not. Right. Is, that, is that a conversation? Absolutely. Because the worst thing you do is lie to somebody, and all of a sudden you get down to the, end of the last cut date, and they're like, well, I thought I was doing okay. I'd want to know. If I, you know, as a player, I, you know, I want to know where I stand. Is a kid asking his, his position coach, what's it going to take to make this team? Or what do? Do? Everybody's different. I, my door's always open. Uh, never mind when guys want to come by and ask, and we'll have those conversations. Anything else? Yeah. Actually, you were talking about the running backs earlier. Uh, Avery Williams, obviously a transition for him. But what have you seen out of him that leads you to come? Leads me encouraged. Um, you know, handling the transition and then coming out here and showing flashes that he can make plays. And that's what Bill, you know, the practice, you got to show it. And then as we gradually step into the season, we'll get more opportunities in, in those games and in those competitive practices. So he's he's made some plays out here. Um, pretty dependable guy. So I'm excited about him. Pretty good about that group's pass catching ability. How? But, uh, you know, uh, there's certain guys, you know, that's why I don't get in comparisons. You know, if you had a Darren Sproles, right, those are the traditional. Hey, they go, those guys are elite coming out of the backfield, guys like that. But that's what makes CP unique. He's got strong hands. Uh, he may not be a Darren Sproles traditional back coming out of the backfield, but there's other things that CP does. I think Avery's got pretty good hands. All those guys work on him. Um, so, and it, it, if they show that they can run certain routes or they got reliable, then you, then you put more stuff in for them that way. Cordell, Patterson, uh, and 
how much is that energy? Uh, how important is that? It's also as a leader, personality, just seems like watching even how he interacted with you and, and some of the guys, especially given that position, how important is he for the energy of the team? Yeah, because I, 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 he's the same guy. I mean, the, the worst is the, is the rah-rah guy when you guys are around or if you're mic'd up or something like that. But CP's, you know, he's consistent, like being around him. He works hard, studies. So he's a fun guy to be around. Can you, can you notice the difference when a guy gets mic'd up and he's playing? Absolutely. Mike Walker tried to get me today. He was fishing for compliments. <laughs> and, he, and he got me for a second, then I realized he was mic'd up. But you see guys that totally change their first. And you watch it and can see that that's not really who they are. Yeah. But we, we got good guys here. I, I've seen I've been other places, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the more he shows us that he can do, we'll, we'll add more to it. And he, we don't feel like he's, you know, the, the analogy he hadn't filled up his, the bucket yet. Like, you know, he got out there and threw some good balls today in one-on-ones. Um, very pleased with him.